What's going on everyone? After I posted that video rigging up the Altrex, rigging the new uh, Garmin Graphs and the Panoptics Transducer, I got a lot of questions about showing you guys a boat walkthrough, showing you guys how I lay my boat out, how I put my rods, my tackle, and all my accessories in the boat to make this boat most optimally performing for what I need it to do. So what I'm going to do is start at the back of the boat and show you guys every single compartment on my Phoenix 920. Pro XP. So the boat is a 2014 and at the back of the boat I'm running a Yamaha 250 SHO motor. This is a four stroke motor. Awesome fuel efficiency, super quiet and gets me to where I need to go very very quickly. It's an awesome motor um, and, and that's really the motor I wanted on this boat when I brought it. So then we're going to start at the driver's side compartment here in the back. In this compartment here this is where I keep all of my accessories, my life jackets, my uh, my rope that I need to tie off to the dock. I keep my face shield in here for when it's raining or really, really nasty, as well as a couple other things. So if we look in here, it's kind of messy right now, but you have my Onyx life jacket. You have a spare Onyx life jacket, some seeds, some rain gear, a spare face shield, some more rain gear, a rope, and then just a couple random things on there on the bottom. Obviously a bag of seeds because you always need seeds on the water. So this is what I have rigged up in this back compartment right here. Next, I have my live wells. And one thing that I did in these live wells that's kind of cool is I put a culling system. Now a lot of people are going to the non-piercing coal beams or coal tags, but I can put six tags in here. So if I'm fishing a tournament and I need to know how many fish I have, if I have one left leftover tag, that means I have five fish in the live well. That's exactly what I want. So every time I'm done, take one of the tags off the fish. I always need to have one tag in here. My buddy Don made me this. It's just a piece of aluminum that he took, bent, and drilled some holes in for me for call tags. This next compartment here is the passenger side compartment behind the passenger seat. This is typically pretty empty. It has a couple things in here, but normally there's nothing in here. I like to keep this open for the people that are riding with me. Right now in here, I have a kit in case something happens on the water. It's got jumper cables. It's got some uh, tools that I might need. I have a block and this is in case I need to change my prop. You basically keep a piece of a 2 by 4 you put it between your prop and your motor. Um, use this prop wrench right here to get your prop nut off. And uh, this is a very, very key piece if you're out there on the water because it makes sure that you're able to get a prop on your motor. So that way you don't need to be stranded way away from the uh, dock that you have to get back to. And finally, I have some TH Marine G juice. I don't fish a lot of tournaments, but having stuff to put in your live well, especially if you're around schooling fish, is extremely important. Um, one thing about schooling fish is I like to put them in my live well because I think if you release a fish and it goes back to that school, I've, I've seen it to where those fish will shut off on me. So keeping them in the live well and keeping them healthy is extremely important. And that G juice does that for me. We're going to look back in here in the battery compartment right now because I did add another battery to the boat. Uh, my boat came with four. It's a 36 volt system. Uh, so you have the three trolling batteries and the starting battery. I added another battery over there on the end. So I have five batteries now. Um, and that's really nice for running my graphs too and running anything that isn't going straight to my motor. I don't necessarily like to have things running off of my starting battery because what I've had happen is that my starting battery is slow to crank because it's not getting the juice it need, needs because I just ran all of it dead off of my uh, graphs and all of my live well pumps and everything else. So that's why I ran that new battery back there. I do have to use a separate charger. I only have a three bank charger, excuse me, a four bank charger in there. So that charges my trolling batteries and my starting battery. But it's really nice to have the extra battery to keep my graphs running all day long. And then finally, going back to that prop wrench, I do carry a spare prop. One thing that Phoenix is really good about is giving you an area to store that spare prop. So I put that right in there. So that way if anything happens, I'm always able to have a spare prop with me in case I need to switch it out. So moving forward in the boat, you have your two seats obviously, and you have your center console here. This center console keeps everything that I need on a daily basis. So like super glue, I keep one spool of leader line. This is eight pound test in there because I rig uh, my drop shots with this, all my spinning tackle with this leader, like leader material right here. I keep my Altrex controller right in here that controls that Altrex. So if I need to be back here and I need to hit spot lock, I can hit it with this controller right here. I also always keep a spare pair of sunglasses. These are Costa, these are amber lenses, um, but I keep them in my boat because in case something happens, I need to have another pair of sunglasses. Or if my buddy Mitch forgets his, which is like every single time we go fishing, those are basically his sunglasses. 
This here is for all of my important paperwork, my insurance, my registration. I also keep all of that stuff to fizz fish right in here. So those needles and these syringes um, just keeps it really dry, safe and out of the way. I keep a couple mounts in here for my action cameras. So if I need to mount it to the side of the boat or wherever I need to mount it, I have a couple extra of those right in there. And then I always keep sunscreen in here. Uh, sunscreen is very important. I like to keep myself uh, safe from UV rays as possible. So 50 SPF sunscreen is an extremely important piece or tool that I have in my boat. So that's really all that's in there. Oh, and I also have my gambler scale. I hope to put this to work a lot this year, but this gambler scale is awesome. It has a clamp mount, which I really, really like, and it reads in pounds and ounces, which is awesome for me. And then next to that center console is where I keep my buoys. These have become an important piece of me fishing offshore, um, basically making sure that I know where to line up to that cast. And then I changed out the weights. These are 12 ounce weights. These get down there fast and they hold even in the biggest, roughest, baddest bodies of water. Moving over here to the console, the driver's seat. Um, I'm sitting behind a Garmin 7610 unit. It's a 10 inch touchscreen unit. Uh, if you guys watch my Garmin setting videos, this is the unit that I was doing that on. Um, I have my steering wheel here. This is my hydraulic jack plate on the left. Then on the right, I have my trim tabs. These are really nice to keep your hands on the motor or on the steering wheel at all times. I don't have to hand it a hand over here on the throttle to do my trim up and down. It's all right here at my steering wheel. I then have a hot foot right here. This hot foot's extremely nice again. That way I don't have to have my hand on this throttle. I can have my hands on my steering wheel at all times. Moving to the passenger side, I have a unique feature over here in the fact that there's a passenger rod storage center. So what this is right here, you can put your rods in here that you want to get out of the way. Um, you can fit up to four rods in here. And right now I just have a piece for my, my boat cover in there. But if someone were coming with me, I'd pull that out and uh, they can store up to four rods of reels in there. They also have a strap right here. This is to hold their rods down and they have a place to put their rods. I also have the option for a passenger console which I have stored at the back of my garage right now because I don't typically put that in. But that is a really nice feature if I'm taking someone out and it's really cold or it's really, really rough, I can put that passenger console in to keep them out of the water and keep them out of the cold. These boxes right here are where I keep most of my like small pieces of tackle or things that I know I'm gonna need. So like my Frenzy wack a jigs, I have some split rings in here. I have my tungsten weights from Beast Coast, um, some Sharpie markers, some Nico rig weights, just a couple other things, knickknacks that I know I'm gonna need when I'm out there on the water, small things. And then underneath here, I keep some more live well additive. And this is the please release me formula. It's a powder that you just dump in your live well when you put fish in there and it's gonna keep those fish safe and healthy all day long. Moving forward to the business end of the boat. This is what you guys probably wanted to see. Um, but this is where I spend all of my time when I'm out there catching all those big fish. In here is my large tackle storage center. Now this doesn't have all my tackle in it. Normally I have this thing filled to the, filled all the way up. Uh, I like to run really heavy. I put a ton of tackle in here because I don't like to get out there and realize I don't have something. Sometimes I can cut it down, but for the most part, this is typically pretty full. Right now I have six or seven tackle boxes in here um, with my deep divers, my uh, top water, some more crankbaits, some more crankbaits, some more crankbaits, some jerk baits, some jigs. Uh, and then I have those boxes. And then on the sides here, I put 3,600 size boxes, a little bit smaller boxes that hold a lot of my small soft plastics. And then in this box here is where I have all of my hooks. This is where I put my hooks. Um, and it's just in a really easy, accessible area. You have your Phoenix bump board right here, which you can pull out and put back in. It keeps it out of the way, really nice and handy. You have some tackle storage here. You put your hooks through here and you can hang up baits that you want to get back to using. And then you have some soft plastic storage here that you can clip in right down there. I also have all of my tools that I'm going to need right down here. A couple pairs of scissors, some pliers, some split ring pliers, all easy to access from right here on the deck of the boat. Also a very cool feature about Phoenix. And this is probably something that a lot of people have never seen before. Phoenix boats has a net storage center right here on the floor. So what you can do is put your net right here in the floor 
That way it keeps it out of the way, um, but ready to go whenever you need it. Continuing to move forward, this box here, the smaller box, is essentially my day box. If I know that they're eating swim baits, I'm going to put swim baits in here. If I know they're eating crank baits, I'll put crank baits in here. But right now I just have a mess. I uh, just have a ton of different tackle in here that I need to get cleaned up before the season starts. But normally that's like my day box. I put everything in there that I know I'm going to need for the day. So moving into the rod locker, this is where I keep a bunch of my extra setup, stuff that I might need when I'm out there on the water, stuff that um, I kind of want to keep stored away. Uh, down here I have probably six or seven more rods in case I might need them. And I did take out the rod tubes at the front. I've had some issues with rod tubes in the past. Um, tips getting broken when it gets really rough. So I took that out, but I did keep the organizer down at this end where the handles go. I like that because it keeps the rods separated, um, but still easy to access by pulling them out with rod sleeves on them. And then finally, in this compartment over here, this is my catch-all. So I keep my lights in here. Um, I keep my Garmin graph covers in here. Some extra life jackets. I love to have extra life jackets in the boat. I keep a dry bag in here as well as a couple other accessories like a uh, fire extinguisher as well as my flares and other things that I need to have. And moving up even further, you have my Minn Kota Altrex, which we just put on. 52 inch shaft, 112 pound thrust motor. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome piece of equipment here that I played with the other night when we were out there on the water. Then you have your pedal right here, a recessed trolling motor pedal. Um, on off switch on the motor, spot lock, north up, which will basically jog you five feet in the direction that the motor's pointing. Now this is brand new for this year. I'm running two Garmin graphs up here at the front. So I'm running the Garmin 1040 XS right here and the Garmin uh, 73 Echo Map CV unit right here. This unit here is dedicated <coughs> live view down. And this unit here is dedicated live view forward sonar and down view but this unit here is really really cool because it's a piece of technology that i didn't have last year live view down essentially shows you like a panoptics view of sonar so you can see left and right of your bait dropping down if you guys haven't seen it guys either go check out paul mueller on instagram or i'll leave a link right here for you guys to a video that i did ice fishing it'll give you an idea of why i'm so excited about this unit right here dedicated live view down on my boat um, so I'm running two graphs up here, super, super pumped. Stepping off of the boat, I'm running three transducers on my graph right now. This is my dedicated live view down transducer. It's a Garmin PS22 transducer dedicated to this Echomap 73CV unit. I also have the PS31, which is on the shaft. This is the same transducer that I was running in the past with this 1040XS unit right here. Um, but this is an awesome, awesome, awesome unit. And then I have a hydro wave right here and my down view sonar transducer right here. And my hydro wave, whoops, hydro wave gets mounted right there. So that is a top to bottom view of my boat. If there's something you guys would like to know or would like to see or like to understand better why I rigged it that way, let me know in the comment section below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please go down and give it a thumbs up. And as always, thank you for watching. Take care. Tight lines. God bless.